At the end of the smallpox eradication program, with vaccination cessation, uh, there was a concern that human monkeypox, the DRC clade, the Central African clade, would actually possibly replace smallpox in that epidemiological niche that was left open after smallpox vaccination, which prevented against monkeypox, was stopped. What the recommendation was after many, many different studies was that it was necessary to continue surveillance. And surveillance has been continued, but it's been continued without very much funding. And it's a shame uh, on all of us that we haven't advocated more for funding to continue the activity of surveillance of monkeypox in Central Africa. Because if you see a case of monkeypox, if you've seen a case of smallpox, they are the same. It's a disease that is so similar to smallpox that you cannot tell the difference clinically. It's a virus that has a 10% mortality rate, and it's a virus which has not yet escaped the African continent, as has the West African clade, which, as you know, is a much less serious infection. But fortunately, um, DRC has continued the surveillance activities, and I'm going to ask Danielle to just tell us a little bit about what they've been doing in the last year with no international funding, because there is no funding for this. And we need to make sure that our policymakers understand that we need to watch these global threats before they enter countries around the world and can actually derail a program of eradication of a very important infection. So Danielle, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with surveillance? Then I'm going to call on Chris and on Tom and on others to just say a word about monkeypox as well. So Danielle, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, David. Uh, I know that we still uh, have uh, the the monkeypox surveillance in the in the province of uh, of uh, Chuapa, which is uh, at the north part of uh, DRC. Uh, that part uh, of activity uh, is supported uh, by uh, US CDC, and uh, they have been here f there for for long years. And uh, those samples were mostly being tested uh, uh, in, 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 within INRB facilities. And in 2012, I uh, was also involved uh, in those activities uh, in uh, the northern part of TRC uh, when uh, an outbreak occurred. And then uh, they have started um, trying uh, one vaccine. There still be a clinical trial. I forgot the name, maybe Invamune, I think. It should be Invamune, yes. Uh, so far with CDC. And we have another, another place uh, in the center of TRC in Cole, where uh, Dr. Placid worked for five years with uh, US Emirates and with uh, Dr. Lisa Inslee. Uh, from NIH and also an, uh, a project uh, of surveillance uh, of uh, monkeypox. And uh, actually, uh, one, uh, a province close to the North Kivu where Goma is located is uh, on um, ongoing outbreak uh, with uh, many cases. And I think for last year, we have had like, I think, uh, 1,200 1, uh, uh, monkeypox cases uh, in DRC, which is a lot compared to what uh, <coughs> we are actually having um, on different uh, countries. And uh, uh, right now, I think NIH is ready to start uh, a clinical trial with an antiviral, Teco Virimat, uh, in the uh, eastern part of DRC, but also in, uh, in the northern and central part of uh, DRC. And we do have uh, a control program which worked for, for, for years uh, and mostly with uh, US CDC. And uh, we are very happy that uh, at this point, we are, uh, uh, CDC is developing, I think with an IH, um, uh, one point of care with gene experts to see if we can have uh, the diagnosis uh, done uh, on site. And uh, I see that Imoite is uh, in the room and uh, uh, thank you very much, and also Dr. Placid. They are, we work together on the project, but uh, they are the one who will lead the, the project. So there still be opportunities. And for Rodolphe Merieux Lab in Goma, 
it's because um, from where the outbreak is ongoing now, it's more closer to Goma. And why, this is why it will be very important to set up a diagnostic capacity in uh, Goma and uh, all what is related to the cold chain, et cetera, so that those samples um, collected from uh, patients in, uh, in uh, Tunda, in Manyema province, can be transported to Goma for, for testing. We can for, uh, have uh, testing on site, but for example, for sequencing, that can be done in Rodolphe Meru lab uh, in Goma. So this is also a part of that uh, opportunity we, we we do have. And this is uh, something which is uh, most common to, to, to DRC and to some regions of uh, of, uh, of DRC, but uh, we are very happy uh, that uh, uh, the monkeypox again uh, raise up as, as an emerging uh, viruses, and uh, so that shed light, uh, everyone can be uh, can jump in now to see how to develop uh, some other um, opportunities in terms of diagnostic research and also uh, uh, surveillances. And we add more cases in this third part of DRC because it was for the first time that was documented and people didn't know how to be, to be uh, faced with that virus. Uh, contrarily to the, the northern and central parts of, uh, of the country where they used to see uh, uh, frequently those, uh, those cases. This is what I can say. Uh, last night we were talking with him about the project and actually um, he reported that there have been 9,000 cases reported in the past three years. So this is a disease which back in the 70s spread to maybe two or three generations because everyone was vaccinated, and now it's up to 9, 10, and 11 generations, and it's something to worry about. So let me ask um, Tom, do you have anything to add about monkeypox and then Chris? Thanks so much, David. And first of all, I just really want to just commend your leadership over the years on pox viruses, and, and thank you for all that you've done around the world on this. I share your concern <clears throat> and really appreciate the comments by Daniel just now. And, need, and, and we need to learn as much as we can from the leaders who have been managing this disease endemically. Three brief points. First, I am very concerned about the course of this outbreak so far. I'm not concerned that this will become a highly respiratory transmissible disease that we've been dealing with, obviously, with COVID flu measles. But I am concerned that it could become an entrenched STI that spreads to close contacts and that it could exploit and, and probably will exploit lower resource healthcare systems and communities at risk that will make it harder to control. And so we do need to spend more funding and attention on it right now and in the long term. The second point is that I think we have an enormous communication challenge in front of us. We need to communicate with doctors, healthcare providers, and communities that are at risk, but in ways that do not stigmatize that, those communities. If we do stigmatize them, then there's a chance that they will, first of all, turn away from care and th feel threatened by that. And we shouldn't do that because it's not the right thing to do and because it's also important for us just to continue to make progress. And many of the healthcare providers that we're gonna be relying on to recognize this will have never seen a case in their lives and, and really need to be prompted to think about it. And the last point I'd make is the potential importance of using smallpox vaccine wisely as a post-exposure prophylaxis. We know that there's evidence that, that it works to prevent monkeypox, but it is not a vaccine that's easily accessible and it's widely varying in the world where it is available. Even where it's available, it's not a very simple process to get it out uh, into the field. And so I think we have a real challenge in beginning to unlock uh, the availability of smallpox vaccine as a, a post-exposure prophylaxis quickly. So um, I'll stop there. Thanks, Tom. And it's it's really quite um, ironic that the the, spec the clade of monkeypox in West Africa that doesn't transmit person to person in West Africa is now transmitting person to person within Europe, North America, and Australia, whereas the strain that does transmit very easily from human to human in the Central African area has not fortunately yet come into industrialized countries, but there's a good chance that one day it will. And that's why, again, we need to really make sure that our policymakers and those who provide the funding provide the right amount of funding. Nancy. <laughs> I just want to follow up on what Tom said, all um, really on point comments, but I, I think this is 
an instructive case in point. Um, this is a disease that has 3 to 10% prevalence in DRC, and we're only thinking about it now because it's infected people in other countries. And I, I think that, again, the capacity building in the LMICs is really important. Yeah, just to echo the same thing. I mean, Daniel brought it up. It's a, you know, we're, as you said, we're, we're somewhat fortunate, I'd say, that we have the West African clade that's having its outbreak moment right now. And it's, a, it's an opportunity to shine the light on, on this problem, um, which we should have been recognizing, you know, well before this, um, allowing uh, the, the Congo clade to continue to kick around at the level it is, is wildly dangerous for the entire world. Uh, much as we, you know, we need to think about in terms of like SARS, right? So SARS-2, we let that kick around too much and we get new variants and they come and they continue to haunt us. It's it's the same sort of situation we could be facing here with, with any of these emerging disease threats. And here's one that's that's right here in front of us now. Thankfully, it's not the strain that we uh, would be most concerned about, but I think, of course, we are still concerned about what this, uh, uh, what this West African clade is going to find its way uh, to... Uh, showing us what it can really do, um, just like we've seen in past Ebola outbreaks and in Zika outbreaks, um, when we get when we get you know large amount, numbers of people exposed, uh, our our dogmatic understandings of how viruses transmitted and maintained po in our populations get gets challenged, and we find new ways. We find sexual transmission. We find persistent infection. And you know this, we will now see what you know what monkeypox has up its sleeve, right? Let's get ahead of it before we let the, the more serious strain uh, do the same.